Right, so I'm going to do a new player guide. Uh, this is going to be focused on serious server and mainly for NC. Um, if you've just downloaded the game, brand new, fresh out the box, um, then really, what can you export? You know, what is this game about? I mean, a lot of people have seen the game in the store and never ever played it. Uh, the game is called Planet Side Two. It is a PS4 um, slash PC game. I'm not sure if it's on Xbox. Um, I don't think so. But it might be. Um, but generally, um, the aim of the game is to attack and defend bases. Now, with that said, um, service server is not as busy as other servers. Now, you might see a PC uh, server that is really, really busy. Um, I'm just going to log into Indoor because that's where I really want to go. So as you can see, I'm in a queue at the moment. Now, I'll just tell you a bit, a bit about this quick while we're here. Um, I've currently gone into VR. V, now, the, the continent open today is Indoor. Um, this is VR up here. Now, you can click on it and join it. But I'm currently in it. Now, the reason it does that is the fact that um, it makes you wait in a queue. Now it tries to, I think it tries to balance out the factions. So if you didn't know, there's three factions in the game. There's uh, TR, VS, and NC. Oh, we're going into Indoor now. So you will, um, as you play the game more and more, I'm not sure if it does it as a, as a new player, but it might put you in what's called VR. Now, to get out of VR, you need to go into the map and select the continent. Um, I'll explain all that in a sec. Um, I'm just waiting for it to load into Indoor. Um, I'm going to go into a bit about the map. I'm going to go into a bit about other factions. Oh, so the alert is on currently. As you can see, this is the, what's called the final alert. If you look in the corner, you've got 1 hour 20 to do the final alert. Um, so yes, so this is what you come into normally. This is called the warp gate. Um, the warp gate has a giant shield around it that nobody can get in. Well, that's the enemy. And as I said, it's a PS4 game. Um, you go into the store, you download the PS4 version. Um, it's a free game, free to play. Um, it doesn't cost you a single penny. It doesn't cost a single penny to play online and it doesn't cost you anything in terms of making your character better or anything like that. They don't really have loot boxes as such. Um, they have implant boxes, which is kind of like loot boxes, but implants only give you a slight advantage, I'd say. If at all, I mean, I'm, I'll go into implants a bit in a bit, I'll give you a brief overview. But So as a new player, um, you've joined the server, this is what you come across come across a warp gate. Now you you generally, um, everybody starts here, now it's dead at the moment because there's, people are probably playing in game and not in the warp gate. Now, I've got my game on 1080 um, just for the purpose of this video, but I normally run it at 480 um, just because the, the game is so laggy and it, it, it has a lot of, I mean the game has a lot of glitches as it is, but I, I get a lot of stutter um and glitching like I, I fall through floors sometimes it gets that glitchy i'm shooting at someone going through a wall sometimes now people say that's your internet but uh my internet runs fine on any other game it's just this game it tends to run pretty bad now anyway yeah so you're in the warp gate to get into the continent as i did earlier you will see these world uh maps you can interact with them and it will take you to all the continents that are open. Now on PC uh, currently, they might have probably all of them open. Maybe, I'm guessing, I don't know. Now because the server is not as busy, um, you only have one open. That means that everybody who comes into the game has to join one server and make it busy. The current server I play on is Series. There's two servers, this uh, series, which is 
a so the series and US server now the US server is more populated and people tend to join the US server over joining say um, this server just because it, it comes down to finding good fights it's not necessarily about taking the map so a lot of people want to take the map um, and win and that can wreck fights really um, good fights that people um, so people want to generally fight on a good base as opposed to actually taking and defending the base that kind of sounds weird as a new player you've probably seen them on PC they're like oh well we we need to take this base because it's an objective base it's good for the map you know people do take bases but a lot of outfits don't push the map as much as they should now I'm gonna explain a couple of the basics really um, so yeah to type in game um, you swipe across your sensory pad um, you swipe from right to left across it you'll get this that's faction chat and general chat if you join an outfit you will have outfit chat come up I'm just going to join a squad for the purpose of this video as you can see squad chat comes up that's your talk to your squad if you invite friends to a squad that's where you can talk to them. You can also use mic chat in game. Uh, I'll explain a bit about that in a minute. So, to use chat, you just swipe across, you press square to chat. Hi. You just I'd say hi in fraction chat. Now, as you can see, it comes up in the corner in that little square box. Now, the thing you will notice, I'm just going to you will see that the chat in the corner becomes very pixelated very pixelated and it gets to a stage where you can't actually see so if I sit back um, from my screen now I'm using a TV to play this I know a PC player is probably like well I use a, P a PC monitor but um, I can't see so if you type so if you type uh, I don't know new update soon you can't see it really in the corner it, it really you really struggle to see it now the reason you people play on uh, 480 or 720 it's just that the game runs a lot better you get less stutter and less lag um, that's what I will say um, so if if you've just joined the game and you're stuttering quite a lot you could turn down the in the settings menu you could you could put it onto 720 or 480 if you've got it i don't think some uh people have 480 i think they only have 720 um but that's another thing so yeah going back to the um chat thing you just type in chat you've got squad chat fraction chat and general now um to do what's called a yell chat you will hold l3 down uh you can put hi in yell chat Yell chat, it's a bit pixelated, but you can see it, actually. So there, as you can see, you've got the high. You can see it a lot better now. So what yell chat means is that when you press L3 and do what's called a yell chat, you are yelling to everybody around you. Now, it doesn't stretch across the whole map. It only stretches around the base that you're at. And probably another base. I'm not sure how far it goes exactly, um, but yeah. So that's how to chat in game. Chatting in game is important as a new player because you can ask what you need to be doing, and you can ask where you need to be going, and you can ask if there's any squads going. Now people do use mic in game, but it's very rare. Um, you usually get squads that use mic. So as you can see, I'm currently in proximity. Now I'm not talking in proximity chat. Currently I'm not doing anything. This is because I'm using a PSN party chat to talk. Otherwise, I would be talking in game and annoying everybody who can hear me. Especially in squad chat, I'd be talking. So what you want to do. Now, the chat is very, very buggy. Currently. You talk in... It, the game will put you in proximity when you've joined. Now, as you can see on the sensory pad, if you swipe up, it will go to squad chat. Swipe up again. Fire team. Proximity. 
squad fighting. Now, you usually have what's called an outfit chat. An outfit chat is used when you have an outfit. An outfit I'll go into in more detail in a, in a sec. But an, out, an outfit is a group of people that party up together and do things as a team. Um, that enables you to just talk to your outfit and nobody else. Um, fire team is pretty useless. You can have what's called fire teams in game, which is a, a squad of four guys up to five guys, which is called a fire team, I believe. I believe that's what it's called. I've never ever used a fire team chat. And obviously, proximity chat is proximity, so that's around you. So that's people that isn't aren't in your squad or isn't in your um, outfit, but you want to talk to them, you can go into proximity. Now, another way to do this is to hold down R1. You go to voice options and you select which one you want to use. Now, this is a lot easier than doing it, than, than scrolling up on the sensory pad. This also resets sometimes when you go to outfit chat, it will not work. So you have to go into voice options and reselect it to get it to work. It's very, very buggy. This game has a lot of bugs, that being one of them. Now, um, with that said, um, I've talked about how to chat in game. Very important. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the map. Okay, so for the map, as you can see, you this is the map. Now it's very, very big right now, very big map. This has a lot going on currently. Oh, they're all in a bio lab, no surprise there. Now, to do this, um, to get on to the map, you can... I think you can go into this. No, you can't. So don't use this. Okay, you want to go onto the sensory pad, and you want to touch. You want to just tap the sensory pad, and it will come up with this. Now you want to press L2 to zoom out. This enables you to zoom out. You can look around the map. Now, what you are trying to do is defend and attack bases. Now, these are all bases. This is a base. This is a base. This is a base. And this is a base. All bases. Okay. It's a big map. Now, it should be played with a thousand people, um, really, on the whole continent. So, you would have squads of 100 to 200 men going around, zerging and whatnot. Now it doesn't happen like that. The reason it doesn't happen like that is because the, the um, server, the series server I'm currently on, isn't very busy. Now it's nobody's fault. It's just that over the years, with updates, FPS drops, the game playing at a, a very very bad, um, you know, FPS, people getting stutter, lag, etc. It drives people away, you know. And they haven't updated this game, I don't think. For about three years, somebody said. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know it certainly hasn't, a, hasn't had a massive update for a very long time. Now, um, so yeah, so let's. So we talked about the map. Now, you, you press the sensory pad and you scroll out. Now, you, you haven't got to drive from the warp gate to the place where you need to go. You can teleport. So let's do that real quick. As you can see, it's redeploying me. Now I pressed triangle to do that. Okay, so as you can see, this base is being taken. It has three points, because I've zoomed in and had a look. I can spawn on it, because I have the... As you see, it's got the green thing there. It's called the Vano Archives. I'm going to spawn on it, as you can see. It's taking me there straight away. Now, I'm not going to fight at this base. I'm only going to go there for the purpose of this video. As you can see, I've already started talking about the basics. And it's very, very timely. It takes a you know, this game is very, um, you know, the skill gap in this in this game is, is very high. You know, it takes a lot to learn the game and read the map and play the game as a rule. Like... It's it's just really hard in general to uh, get, you know get good at the game. I feel I feel it, it it makes it worse because of a lot of veteran players 
they they just absolutely own the new players and it it's just not right really you you should have a new player experience with other new players not with veteran players who have been playing the game you know since 2015 and have got so much knowledge that they can just own you with you know whatever gun they pick you know and you as a new player just starting out is getting you know you're getting owned you, you know you're going to get owned now anyway I'm, I'm going slightly off topic I'm going to carry on with the map so as you can see you can spawn anywhere on the map you press trying um, you press square again on the map you will redeploy now as you can see that square thing there is what's called a sunderer somebody has to place that down that is for when you don't have control of a base so as you can see uh, this base here is now being taken taken back you can spawn here um, because you own the base you can't spawn at this base because you don't own it now with that said people, someone has put what's called a spawn point down and you can spawn on it and and that's that really I'm not going to go into too much detail um, I'm sure you know what a spawn point is it just means that you can spawn there I'm going to go back to indoor I'm going to go back to the warp gate because I don't want to be in game currently but yeah so to type in chat you swipe along you've got squad fraction chat general you've got yell chat and to get in the map you do that and you scroll out if you scroll really far out, you can go what's called the VR. Now VR, um, as 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 the name suggests, is just virtual reality. It's like a training place. You can go there, and you can test every gun in the game. You can test all the equipment in the game. You can pull a vehicle and test it out. Um, that's a place to go before you buy um, anything in game. So, let me just show you my character real quick. So as you can see in the corner there, I'm level 100. My name is Commando. That is my alias name. And I have 92 what's called Daybreak Cash. I have 951 certs. I have 750 uh, nanites. Now, as you can see, I've got Araxium armor on my engineer. I'm using a brown camo that I bought. Now the game is 100% free, doesn't cost you a single penny. This is camo I've bought. Um, the Araxium armor I did not buy. I got that for free by doing directives. Now directives are, so you click start, you go down to directives. You have basic training, which is the basic training directive that you will do as a new player. You can unlock camo for your character, if you didn't know. Camo being this particular camo right here. The Souls camo. Looks pretty good. I actually quite like it. Just gonna put that back. And that's that. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail about character building and characters in general, but directives is something that, as a new player, you can look at and see which directive appeals to you. So you've got infantry. Um, so here you've got different uh, force recon, combat medic. Um, the directives for any class that you want to play, and at the end of it, you can get what's called a Raxium armor. So I haven't got engineer up here just because I've completed it. But let's go for combat medic, for example. You'll be starting off at novice, and you'll work your way through all these expert ad adapt novice as you can see this is what you do so i got kills and healing ribbons to start off okay the next one i got revive ribbons healing ribbons and kills and this one i got these and in the master rank i've got two done out the three so i need three more so i need to get here i need to get uh, shield ribbons so you read what it says and you do what it says. Some of them can be quite confusing, but generally as a combat medic, I'm using the combat medic as an example because that's probably the first class you'll pick. And you might as well go for the directive straight off the bat. Um, I mean, why not? Um, the Araxium armor is just Araxium armor kind of like this, but a bit different. It's kind of like the medic. 
So as you can see, um, we just put the standard armor on. So this is the standard armor. That's what it looks like. Now that isn't a standard helmet. The standard helmet would be something like this. Oh, it keeps flicking back. Something like this. So your character at the end of it would look something like this. With the blue cells. Okay, that's when you've done the directive. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like the character models. I think the character models look good. But what I'm saying is, what I'm generally um, trying to point out is that the Raxium armor is exactly the same as the standard armor, except that um, it's just like a the color blue, like a, a tinted blue with, it's kind of hard to explain really what it is, but that's it. So yeah. So it takes a lot to get the directives done. Um, it takes a while, but generally people work towards them in game. So yeah, I think I've covered all the basics here. I'm not going to go into too much detail about characters. And one thing I will say, just quick, uh, briefly. So you've got all these characters. Now as a, as a new player, you're probably thinking, well, which character do I pick? Okay, first of all, you don't want to entertain maxes. That's more of a high tier thing. You don't need to pull them. Okay. Um, you don't need anything to do with them, really, as a new player. Um, Engineer is something that unlocks a bit later on as a new player. I don't think you can use it straight off the bat. But I wouldn't personally go for Engineer. I would personally go for Combat Medic. Very, very useful. Okay, in 90% of situations, they will um, help your team drastically. Okay, they can pick people off, off the ground. They can heal people. They can plant C4 down. You've got different uh, C4 things you can use. Uh, I mean, gen generally all round, good purpose infantry. Good purpose, uh, and not only that, a good thing to note as well is that as a new player, you're going to want to build your cert gain up. Um, certs being, I have 951. If you look in the right corner at the very top, you will see that I have 951 certs. This is, um, this is like in-game currency that you can use. So if you go into a, a gun, for example, so let me have a look at a gun that I haven't purchased yet. So the Reaper DMR is a thousand um, certs. So it costs you a thousand certs to buy. Um, I have 951, so I'm not quite there. But that's what that's the gun I'm actually saving up to get. Now you get certs by getting experience points. You gain experience points by doing things in game. So um, as a combat medic, picking people up would give you certs. It would give you XP that then translate to cert. Um, I think you need 250 XP for one cert, I think. I could be wrong. I'm not sure 100% on that. But um, you gain a certain amount of XP and that then gives you one cert. And for engineers, you get you obviously repair things and that's where you get your cert gain from. You can give people ammo. As a medic, you repair people. Um, you repair people. You heal people. That gives you certs, and it gives you the highest cert gain, I would say, at the two. So if you're thinking about picking uh, Engineer, I would just generally pick Combat Medic, just because they are um, they give you a higher cert gain. And then, I mean, later on, you can probably move on to um, something else, really. You can, you can play Heavy Assault if you want to. You can play Light Assault. But Medic uh, gives you a general um, a feel for the game, and... Another thing to do is, for, so you've got nano regen, so I've maxed that out. So you want to max out stuff that gives you good certs. So nano revive grenade, very useful. Nano regen, very, very useful. Okay. You want to go into nano weave armor. You don't want to max out nano, nano weave. You only want to get up to level four, if that. I mean, level one is fine. Level two is fine. You don't really need to go any more than that, to be honest. Um, guns wise, I mean the, the standard gun, the standard NC1 Gauze Rifle is a really really good gun. Don't feel the need to buy any other gun. Okay, stick with the basic gun, save your certs, put it into stuff that matters. This is your medical applicator, this will pick people up off the ground quicker. So you want to max this out as soon as you can. Because the quicker you can pick people up, 
you're making it a two versus one. So if there's one enemy on the point, you go to the point with a medic, you can get your teammate up and you can make it a two versus one. Okay. Generally, as a combat medic, you want to run in the room with your gun out, not your applicator. Okay. So let me pick combat medic for the purpose of this. So if somebody's in that room over here. You know there's somebody in that room. Your teammate is down. Don't run in and start reviving him. Okay, run in. Try and shoot the guy who's shooting him, who was shooting him. Kill the guy, then pick the guy up. Okay, good good habit to get into there. I know a lot of uh, people fall into that. Now, I think I've explained a bit about the uh, general server basics. Um, I will say that serious server is less busy, but don't worry about it, don't worry about it at all. Um, don't worry about how populated the server is and how not populated it is. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, what I will say is that um, just try and enjoy the game. Um, the new update is coming out in around four or five days, um, that is going to hopefully bring people back um, if you're new to the game brand new to the game and you you're on nc um, feel free to type in fraction chat anytime um, you know ask questions if if veterans are on hopefully they will see that and reply um, it's very very confusing to get into the game just based on the fact that um, the skill gap is very large because you you're fighting i mean I, i'm level uh, i'm level 100 well, I'm level 200 actually because I got ASP 100. Um, and you come across me in game, and I'm not saying I'm really, really good at the game. I'm not. But but I would, I would generally be able to one on one a new player better than a new player would be able to one on one me. And this this isn't just for me. You come across a lot of heavy assaults that just go around beating up new players. And it wrecks the new player experience. Especially as a new player, you're like, well, how do I beat this guy? And you're going to die a lot. You know, it's going to be something that happens a lot. Now, to combat this, to combat dying, I'm just going to go to VR real quick. Okay. Now, what you're trying to be doing... So, here, I'm going to quickly talk about um, headshots being needed really as a new player it's a kind of a need to know thing um, you're going to get shot at and killed a lot in this game now dying is part of the game we all you know as a new player you're probably going to get used to dying and think well i can't um, kill him or he's very hard to kill you get a lot of heavy assaults on series most of the time it's heavy assaults heavy assaults being the heavy infantry now what does this mean so these guys get an overshield, as you can see, got my overshield on right now. This means that their damage is reduced, redu um, is reduced. Now, they get a massive health bonus from it, apparently. So they, they have something like, I can't remember their like, but it's a standard character has about 1,000 health. So these guys get a lot above that. I think they get roughly around... 1004 to 1005 health, I think somebody said along them lines. I'm not too sure anyway, they've got more health than a, than a standard player. Um, so that makes them really hard to kill. Now, how do you combat this? Okay, well, first thing you do is go for headshots. As you can see, headshots. Headshots are your go to, really. You need early on to get good at headshots. So, as you can see, headshot, beautiful. Now, another thing to do is not to stand out in the open, okay? Standing out in the open, shooting people like this. They're a dot in the background, and you're a massive guy stood on a hill. You should be peeking like this. Okay, you get back into cover, you reload. Same again. Now, with this said, you want to go for headshots up close, like this. Right, any headshot is a headshot, it's all good. Most people up close, hip fire. Some guns have better hip fire than others. 
but generally the standard guns are very very good so currently i'm using um a different gun to the normal gun let me select the different uh, let me show you the different guns real quick so carnage ar is what i'm using um assault rifles so you want to go for the so the standard weapon is the nc1 gauze rifle very nice weapon okay very good as a starter weapon you don't need to go and buy another gun okay now with this is hip fire hip fire is this okay firing from the hip now this because this is an fps game first person shooter hip fire is very useful okay long range hip fire whatever okay one thing you don't want to be doing is going in and trying to shoot them in the head because they move they will move from side to side okay so you you're moving with them i mean as a an experienced player you might do something a bit different but generally as a new player this is what uh, i feel is, is really important so that is that so that will hopefully keep you so, um give you some survival tips another thing is outfits so let's have a look at outfits right now so as you can see i'm not in one i'm not in one for the purpose of this video but um so you can search for outfits now you can join an outfit you've got first cavalry uh, nc elite mobile operations who's this guy what's he doing uh, does he want ammo or something got extra ammunition here. anyway um outfits so here you go you got first cavalry you got mobile operation unit the new alliance uh, a few others really anyway it doesn't really matter so much about what outfit you join um, I would say that joining a outfit that's active really really helps especially those with mics um, so let's go down to outfits real quick you can also start your own outfit with a bunch of friends so if you call it uh, I don't know just call it uh, a bunch of random stuff. So here you go. Joined an outfit. Which is my own outfit. I'm in an outfit currently. I'm the leader. Customization. You can put a decal in it. You can message of the day. Create an outfit tag. Applications. You can People can offer to join your outfit. Recruitment. And then here you can have an outfit tag timeline outfit description and uh, whatever else very very useful okay very useful if you've got a group of friends start your own outfit invite them make a group okay that's all i'm going to really say on that it's not really much to say um the pc version obviously has a, a ton more outfits finding a good outfit on nc is 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 rough as you can see i've got outfit chat there I'm just going to leave this outfit currently. Uh, outfit. Just leave. As you can see, create an outfit, an outfit, uh, search outfits. It's back. You can search an outfit and join an outfit. Each outfit will require most of you to have a mic or some kind of coordination. So, for example, First Cavalry, they want you to use a mic. Uh, the New Alliance, it, it, I mean, just using a mic in general in this game is, is very, very useful. I don't know who this guy is. Um, so yeah, um, so new player tips, really survival. Always go for headshots, body shots. You can duck. Ducking is a circle. You can duck while shooting to avoid them getting headshots from you. Um, always remember to hit fire. Very useful when you're in close combat. Like this. Aim for headshots. Okay, another tip is to um, always keep your gun upwards like this so you zoom straight in on the head as you can see I killed my own team there but just use an example there you go so I've talked about outfits as well I'm gonna go into just quick briefly into implants so what are implants implants are um, stuff that you can add to your character for a better word 
So these are all implants that I've upgraded to max. Now, it, because I'm in VR, it only shows you the max implants. It doesn't show you the beginner implants. Now, I have, I have quite a lot more implants than this. But these are the ones I've upgraded to max. These are the minor cloak, cold heart, intelligence, bionics, logistics. These are what's called rare implants. Now, you get these implants by doing... We're going to the department scrolling along and you buy these packs okay now you have a small chance to unlock them um th this gives you a less um, a less chance to unlock than this just because you're paying inserts and not iso now you for 750 search you can unlock um, a deluxe implant pack that will give you basic implants you can then sell those implants now it does give you a chance of a rare implant, but generally it gives you standard implants. You can sell the standard implants for 250 to 200, around about that, ISO. ISO is the currency that you need to upgrade implants in the game. Not only that, you can buy the ISO recycler. So what that does, that will recycle. Um, so for 500, um, so for 500, you can um, recycle and it will give you a chance of exceptionals or rares. So yeah, you need ISO for that. Obviously ISO in game is very hard to get. You get ISO by doing what's called alerts. Um, it's more of a team thing. So if you do an alert and you win the alert, you might get some ISO plus some basic implants to sell to then make ISO. It's kind of complicated. But generally, you want to um, you want to try and stay on till the final alert. The final alert will give you um, 100 if you lose and 300 if you win. The final continent alert. So that's generally why people push for the final continent alert. Um, a lot of the veteran players in this game have got all the implants they ever need, um, probably for their character. So they don't see the point in trying to get ISO, I guess. That's why you might not see people pushing for the final alert. But if you do win a final alert, you win 300. Now, you save the ISO up. And over time, you upgrade these implants. So as you can see, for example, Sweeper Hood. Uh, the target range is played on your crosshair. Uh, and enemy explosives within 35 meters are automatically spotted. So it works on ground vehicles, maxes, etc. So you might, you're driving a tank, you might pick this, whether it's a level 1 implant, a level 5. Um, battle hardened, it doesn't give you shake at max rank. Uh, so every implant at max rank gives you something extra to get it to max rank. So ammo printer, for example, um, that doesn't give you anything at max rank. It just makes it so that you have every 60 seconds, uh, nearby vehicles you own, uh, and infantry weapons will will give ammunition. So if you jump in the driver's seat of a Sunder, for example, or a tank, you will then be able to restore the ammunition in that tank. There's loads of different implants, and if I went over all of them, I would be, you know, it'd be a diff it'd be another hour video. But generally, you want to upgrade the implants that apply to you. You don't want to upgrade random implants that you don't think is useful, just because. Of whatever you upgrade grade the ones that apply to you so if, for example you're playing combat medic um, the ones that are really good for combat medic is um, stuff like um, it's not in here even though I have it maxed okay strange so good ones for combat medic um, is like a simulate for example um, so one headshots you instantly restore 200 shield on your character and 10% of your maximum ability energy. So a maximum ability energy is when you pull out your gun. Okay, so, oh, I know why I can't get it up. Right, yeah, I see. Right, so, combat medic. Let me just uh, explain a little real quick. So, combat surgeon is an, a medic only uh, implant. This uh, kills and revives will restore 30% of your nano regen device. And reviving an ally enemy increases 
you gives you small arms resistance 25 percent so very very useful um, on a combat medic probably the most useful one you'll ever come across um, a second one is the simulate one very useful because you get 10 percent of your maximum ability energy um, a lot of heavy assaults use this as well um, but as i say i'm not going to go into all of them but i'm just giving you a general outline so combat medic and a simulate set um, on your uh, combat medic very very useful and that's generally it really you get iso by doing alerts and final alert you can upgrade the is you can use the iso to upgrade um, you can also buy implants um, from the department go to department go along to implants now generally this would be full of implants but i bought most of them or or managed to unlock them by some means or another but generally um, people can buy them here if you if you want so um, this one here um, combat uh, medic I think it's oh combat surgeon sorry so this um, is a implant that you can buy so um, I think it costs about 3,500 is it something to buy that's ISO so you save up your ISO over time and you go into the apartment you scroll along to implants you go down and you buy it that will then give you the implant at level one you then need to upgrade it which then costs you even more iso but what i'm trying to say here is that um, that's the best way to get it is to just save your iso so don't waste your iso from day one and start um, putting it because if you spend 10 here 10 there 60 here 100 here and have random implants all over the place you really what you really want to do is save it up and buy something that's useful to you okay uh, i think i've said enough about the implant system but to get it go into departments scroll along implants you've got different packs you can buy do not buy the basic implant pack it is not worth it okay it might look like a good deal but it is not if you're going to buy something buy the deluxe or the iso recycler but they're more for people who have been playing the game a long time and they have free certs or free ISO to waste. Okay, I had a lot of ISO um, standing by because I didn't use it. So I bought the ISO uh, for Recycler and I had, I have bought deluxe implant packs, sold the implants and used it to buy ISO for. But that's just because I've been playing the game a long time and that's that. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave the video there. Uh, don't subscribe. Don't mess. Don't do any of that crap. I, I'm just trying to make the server busier. I'm just trying to make it so that people understand the game a bit more, and they're able to do stuff um, better. Really, just just have more fun in the game. I mean, as a as a vet, uh, as a as a veteran player myself, well, I wouldn't class myself as a veteran player. I mean, there's been people that have been playing for years, like a lot longer than what I have. And I mean, I've been been playing really probably about two years, two and a half years. I mean, that's on and off, really. But yeah, so as I say, you know, as long as you're having fun in the game and understanding it, the skill gap is very large. You know, understanding what to do is is, is can get complicated. But yeah, any questions, guys, put it in faction chat. Um, don't be afraid. You know, hopefully a veteran player will, will answer it. If you see me in game, feel free to drop me a message. Uh, my name is Commando in game. You'll probably see me floating around. You know, feel free to drop me a message. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon, guys. Take care.